if you remember from last time, we did go over this first comment um, and another comment that was deleted. Um, um, but this one is, but the comment, the new comments are in response, are part of this thread. So this one was about basically. Uh, at first, I thought that like um, that this commenter was was critiquing from the left a little bit. Thought they were talking about how you know superhero the term is uh, cannot be reclaimed, and that it just inherently superheroes are conservative. But I think really uh, this commenter is. Uh, thinks that a leftist superhero would be would be funny because he thinks leftism as a joke thinks that leftism is a joke pretty much um you know so i responded you know in good faith that actually i, I think they can be inspirational figures they don't have to be actual um you know one-to-one -one representation of what a leftist should be but they could be symbolic or inspirational you know and that I'm um, Virgo kind of shows how that's possible in the superhero genre and per perhaps it indicates the future we can end up in with the media medium of uh, superheroism in film and, and TV you know so I thought that was that and then someone else chimed in again they've deleted their comments since so if you're reading this on the site on YouTube you might be a little confused but you know someone came in and they responded with but what about all the evil horrors that communism has done look at what happened in vietnam look at what happened in eastern europe look at what happened to poland um okay so first of all let me I'm looking at my screen, but it's not on the stream. I forgot to make it show up. Okay, here we go. So this is the comment. Let's re let's do that again. <laughs> so they responded to this thread, and they said, "But what about all the evil horrors that communism has done? Look at what happened in Vietnam. Look at what happened in Eastern Europe. Look at what happened to Poland when conquered by the Russia." Look at what happened to much of Central Asia. Look at what's still happening in both Cuba and North Korea. Communism killed more than 700 million lives, a much higher kill rate than the Holocaust in World War II. Now, this is kind of like your typical response to any like person who's anti-communist who, who thinks they know what communism is, and it's just like listing off... Uh, these potential these incidents in history as an example of like look communism has failed etc cetera, etc cetera. and but they don't really seem to understand what communism really is so you know my response is which you can see on the web page so just go back to the web page um so you can see my response was no state has fully achieved actual communism and no one will until the whole world is liberated. Communism is a goal that will take a long road. There's no consensus on how we achieve it or what variation of communism is preferable. Places like Cuba are imperfect but have struggled largely because of embargoes. Vietnam is doing better than it would had South Vietnam and the U.S. been so successful in the war. Nations remain bound to international capitalist institutions, which I did shout out in, in the video. I did mention, you know, the IMF, the World Bank, um... You know, because nations are still, you know, bound to the, the, you know, their rules in order to, like, have, uh, you know, to be successful in trade with other countries and stuff. The deaths you mentioned are due to corrupt authoritarian leaders such as Stalin, not leftist values. China's government is better described as state capitalism. North Korea is no more socialist than the Nazis. Um... So, okay, so back to China. So China, people often just think, oh, yeah, they, they call themselves the Communist Party, but really they're a state that dictates uh, common, commerce for the benefit of those, those uh, party members and, and the people, you know, the people in power. So it's really more like a state-run capitalism than actually 
working for the people, you know. In North Korea, you know, in their, I think, constitution or, you know, their, their government uh, paperwork or whatever, like, they have referred to their to socialism before, um, but they have since they have since removed it. I think I have I had a little hiccup there. Hold on. On the encoder, it's you know, okay. It seems seems to be fine. So yeah, so so North Korea, you know, has like removed most of its reference to socialism in their constitution, and they're you know like the Nazis. They call the Nazis call themselves like the Socialist Party, or whatever. Um, but they're at, you know they're of course fascists you know North Korea like their leaders are strong men who see themselves as the you know the leaders who will bring the country into prosperity and stuff and uh, you know and they're complete authoritarians dictating everything about the country so they are fascists you know it's a fascist state I say. Then I go on to say the deaths brought on by imperialism, capitalism, right wing ideologies are uncountable and continue to this day. Um, so, you know, it, I thought, you know, that might end the conversation. Um, basically, I'm just outlining, like, hey, like, all the things you've listed aren't really good examples of. Of why communism is bad it's just that a lot of these places you know have tried to you know ha have strived for communism but have been impeded by other nations and uh, other states like you know like the Soviet Union were run by Stalin who were authoritarian China is the same North Korea like it's not uh, they didn't actually achieve communism and they weren't it never really got to that point where they were seriously trying to, you know, uh, fight for their for for their their people. At the end, it was just a corrupt leaders who took over, basically. Um, you know, and so then they responded, um, and I have the response over here. Again, they deleted these comments. They responded with, "Well, uh, a number of people who died." under Adolf Hitler's reign, 70 million. Number of people who died under Joseph Stalin's reign, 23. Number of people who died under Mao Zedong, which they, I think they listed as 20 something million, I don't know. Um, it gets cut, cut off there, but that's, you get the idea. Um, and of course, like they're listing, you know, as if like, oh, okay, so I, I'm assuming they agree that Hitler's a fascist, but they're saying, oh look, the fascist only killed you know 70 million while these other people who call themselves communists killed so many more you know ignoring the fact that uh, those deaths were due to uh just a transition from capitalism to communism um in regards to mao i think it's because of just the famines of the the mismanagement of the, the agricultural sector of everything um but in particular like stalin you know they people are always calling out Stalin as if like he's the ideal communist which he is not he's a you know uh, an authoritarian tanky who you know wanted to expand his his uh, his reign pretty much and not really didn't really follow the ideals of, of Marx or anything and I mean you'd have to read more into it but you know he's not someone that you know actual communist look up to you know so you know so then I respond with saying okay it seems like you're not so interested in understanding what communism means may I suggest reading up on anar anarcho-communism because I thought maybe they might be interested in the anarchist side of communism you know um, maybe a less of a, a more decentralized idea you know if, if they're if they themselves are more fiscally conservative or something you know um, because I feel like a lot of conservatives may may find their way to communism through anarchism, you know. Um, but if you want to play, I say, but if you want to play a game of death counts, consider the millions of people that die every year, poverty, pollution, etc., from the effects of capitalism and the hundreds of millions of deaths 
throughout our history caused by colonization and military efforts that sought to preserve the power of the wealthy. Um, so yeah, so if you look up like deaths by communist by capitalism, um, one of the first results I found was like from Quora.com of people just listing all the wars, all the famines, all the uh, the colonizations, imperialism, everything that has caused over the years all these deaths that you know serve capitalist. Um, and of course, you know the impoverishment of, of the third world for the benefit of, of you know corporations. Uh, you know, the pollution, et cetera, all these things that, you know, capitalism and capitalist nations uh, uh, do to, that, that affect the world and that cause all these deaths. Like, so it's, it's uncountable. And, you know, you can compare these, these failed regimes of supposed communism, or whatever, but you, to them and, and you'll see to, to the actual deaths by capitalism and you'll see that it, pales in comparison you know um and so you know their last response before they delete everything <laughs> was uh was really a softball <laughs> it's like uh here the th or but wait yeah it says but there are three books that reflect on the downfalls of communist society brave new world animal farm atlas shrugged you know, so he lists these three books as if, like, citing three, you know, fictional books, you know, uh, proves his point that communism is a, is, is, is a failure and, and shouldn't be attempted or whatever, or, sh or no one should uh, support it. Um, you know, so then I go, you're being funny, too young or a bot, bringing up fictional stories you've interpreted to enforce your views. But this author said this, this or that, you know, it's like, what kind of argument is that? It's not really an argument. Um, so maybe they are young, maybe they're just trolling, or maybe they were a bot and the system detected it and that's why their comments are gone now. Or maybe they were just embarrassed, I don't know. Um, they listed Ayn Rand, like, Ayn Rand, and I, I say, Ayn Rand's philosophy is centered on egoism, so of course she hates corporate cooperation and thus the idea of communism, it doesn't make her work insightful. She's a libertarian loony. You know, so if you don't know, Ayn Rand, you know, she wrote The Fountainhead, Alice Shrugged, all these books that a lot of like uh, libertarian conservatives uh, love and idealize, you know, uh, they're all about the idea of pursuing your self-interest and how the people who pursue their self-interest are the ones who make a meaningful and, and and positive impact in society and stuff and so it's like you know as if we have to look up to these genius individualists to help us to help society and to and to move ourselves our, our society forward you know as if like supposedly you know like as if elon musk and whatever are like going to save us you know which is just like complete crap and you know just uh libertarian like libertarian lunacy like you know, and not considering uh, community or people as a whole instead of just like atomizing people into like, you know, individualist beings that, you know, should care for only for themselves and and, and, pers and that will save the world. That would be the idea w ideal way to live and stuff. Um, and then Brave New World's critique, I say, Brave New World's critique is against totalitarianism. Huxley wrote an alternate alternate take on this theme in the island um so yeah so like brave new world you know people often bring it up as a contrast to orwell's 1984 and how like in 1984 it was more about a, a state controlling the people through force while brave new world it's more of a state pacifying the people and the people themselves uh voluntarily give up on their rights and stuff so, you know and you know through drugs and stuff and uh, I guess also the influence of the corporations making the drugs. So it's not it's not specifically about communism. Like it's about a totalitarian society, a government or state or you know mix of corporation state. You know, and and he wrote about this theme in different ways. Like on the island, it was like kind of like the opposite um, way. Instead of like I think it was like drug free island instead of having instead of in Brave New World where 
you know, people took these drugs to pacify themselves. Like, um, you know, so, so, you know, I guess someone could read it as like, oh, this is a, an example of why communism is a failure, but you know, it's not what the, the text really says, you know, it, it applies more to, uh, a, a totalitarian state, you know, than specifically communist values, you know? Um, and then George, or I, and then I wrote George Orwell was an avid anti-fascist. Describes himself as a democratic socialist. Fascism is not communism. Um, again, like Orwell, you know, it's, it's funny that people bring up Orwell as like an example. Of, like people like bring him up to defend capitalism, to defend um, anti-communism. Like he, I believe, fought. In the Spanish Civil War, with the anarchist against uh, the fascist, um, you know, he was against Stalin. Like, of course, he like you know. So maybe you can say that he was against Stalin's communism. But um, you know, but that's, but that you know, of course, that's understandable. Like, um, so maybe he didn't like. I don't think he like specifically, really understood uh the whole breadth of communism but he was definitely on the left he was definitely fighting and writing about uh the downfalls of fascism and in, in, in fascist ideals you know not specifically you know leftist values you know so it, you know you, you can't bring george well up and think that he's defending your views if you're a capitalist you know <laughs> or if you're think uh, the left is, is in the, the wrong direction you know and then I wrote I think we're done here thanks for the engagement because I figured we've pretty much they pretty much said everything they they could muster and uh, they were either a bot or you know just bringing up these talking points that you hear all the time from from conservatives so um, I've you know I figured we're done and, and we were done that was the last thing they said and uh and then they deleted it so all those comments so then i just you know clarified here that in case anyone was reading this i was replying to another user who has since deleted their comments so and i posted the first one that i managed to save i didn't bother uh posting the other ones because you know the people can imagine what they were saying um but yeah so like this is the kind of comments that I guess like I kind of expected from people you know similar to of comments I've gotten in the past in other videos you know more of the reactionary you know right ring side of the internet um who are always like mad about anyone you know bring anything that's vaguely leftist um you know but of course all these talking points are just like boring talking points that are easily dismissed or you know rebuttaled um i i really was hoping I, i'd get more comments from people on the left so we can actually engage in some you know meaningful conversations about uh leftism in in the superhero genre and you know what it would what it means for you know hollywood or just the mainstream to embrace these ideas like you know whether how much how good or how bad it is for society to have these you know capitalist uh inter entertainment institutions uh you know uh, embrace or you know include you know leftist ideas in in their in the work they're using to to, to sell and to make money and stuff so it's like you know we it would have been nice to have more of a nuanced conversation about that but nope we're on the internet i guess <laughs> uh and maybe you know maybe i'll get some more later that are more insightful comments later um but i think the bulk of the interest of the video will be dying down now that it's more than a week old that's just how the algorithm works it seems um so yeah so that's uh, pretty much a wrap up on uh, my commentary on this video for now. Um, 
I might do a follow-up video in the future, who knows. But for the time being, I am going to move on to, um, to the next video. Still figuring out.